This is The Hustlers Corner. Hey, yo, big home, Miss Buddha Arch here from Johannesburg in South Africa. Welcome to another exciting episode of The Hustlers Corner. Like I did say, guys, in 2022, I'm not going to be slacking. In 2020 or 2021, like I would drop an episode once in two months, once in a while, and we've been doing very well. I must appreciate the community, guys. Thank you so much for growing the platform. And if you're new, welcome here. You are a hustler, we are hustlers, we bring hustlers here from all over the world. People are doing different things that I think and I believe it's people I've learned from in the past or it's people that I think there's a thing or two that you can learn from or you can be inspired by. Because sometimes in this hustling journey, we tend to think, it tends to become lonely. And then we sometimes forget that you're not the only one that is going through that journey. So the reason for this platform is to bring in other people who can relate to the journey that you're working, even though without them meeting you, without even them knowing you, because all this entrepreneurial journey that we are all working is similar. As much as sometimes it may be glamorous when people are successful and they're driving nice cars, they're dressing nice, they're living their life, behind the scenes there is a story how those people got there. And every successful person, you must always look at them straight in the eyes. You're going to see the scars in their eyes that you don't see in their beautiful suit or in their nice smelling being that they are at that time because they've achieved, because they've worked hard, but they've been through a lot. Every person has got a story. With that being said, the person that I have here is an entrepreneur extraordinaire. And he's one of the people that I like. And I don't only just like him, I love him. Why do I love him like a little brother to me? It's because he doesn't have the selfishness of just keeping the information to himself. He's always willing to take what he's learned and share with other people. He's always willing to want to create a platform or an environment where other people can come and be together and be like-minded and learn from one another so they can even become better than him. And that's the reason why I'm quite excited to have him on the Hustlers Corner. Now, this has been long overdue, but I kind of felt when the right time comes, it will be the right time. He has to still put in work. And he has put in work, and I just can't help but be impressed. Ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to welcome on the show. He's an owner of his own business. He's got his own platform that is a business where I wouldn't say he makes money or he makes a lot of money. It's basically a platform for other people to help other people to become like him or even better. He's also a father, but one of the things that connects me and him is that he's also a Tembisen. Bulelani bala bala. I think it was Gashim's a hangout, ne? Yes. Yeah. Yes. And how long ago was that event? Yo. Maybe early last year. Yo. Yo. Maybe, ne? No, it's over 12 months, over a year. Ne? That was during the lockdown. Yeah, during the lockdown. <laughs> December. But you know what? Either in social media, you can go to Yeah, because you're following the posts. Yeah. <laughs> and subconsciously, you can go to the posts. That's true. Yeah, That's so true. it's always nice to, um, to, to connect because we see a couple of sun. You know, I'm going to go to the house. I'm going to go to the house. I'm going over the years. Shyly around, ring and just sometimes lunch, just yeah. kabula, you know. No, that's true. And what I love about you is the person that you are becoming or where you are. I was selfish in your info. Now we have this amanya machita, machita kala. Yeah, no, that's true. Maybe it's somebody else. Anja. Yeah. I mean, it's funde anja. That's what you taught us. <laughs> <laughs> but you know what? Now when bulelani, somebody else might be watching out there and be like, "Uba hande outsile." Maybe let's start it from the beginning. Uh, who is bulelani balabala? Uh, Bulelani Balabala, I'm an entrepreneur um, from Tembisa, Nguye Tembisa, Kaslami. Uh, I started off, I mean, about 15, 16 years ago this year, um, you know, running my printing and branding business. Back then, back then, printing and branding. Back then, it was an internet cafe, you know, that had no internet and there was nothing cafe about it um, because there was no infrastructure at Tembisa at the time to be able to have ADSL internet. That time there was still dial-up internet, you know. So we had to wait a couple of years in order to bootstrap and get uh, the network provider at the time to come in and build this in. It took about two years. But we grew from step to step. So did everything from mini maintenance, construction, transporting school kids, selling amakwenya, stationary packs, uh, to growing the printing business. And I think out of that, 
uh, which is still a sustained business, is still out there. We're doing work for a lot of national and multinational businesses. But uh, we were able to start an initiative, Ebizwa T Township Entrepreneurs Alliance, which primarily focuses on empowering township and rural entrepreneurs with access to um, information, training, markets, and business development. And we've ran that now over the past six and a half years, and we've been able to directly impact over 55,000 township uh, entrepreneurs nationally. Wow. I'm so proud of you, bro, the, the, the journey that you've walked, you know. May Dr. Uh, Jabu Mabuza's soul rest in peace. He was one of my inspirations. I've had the pleasure of sitting with the man and being mentored by him from time to time when we're starting Leadership 2020. Reason, one, the reason why I was one of the people I've looked up to from the aspect of him being started out as a taxi driver. Yeah. You know, I look at um, young people like Casper mm. I, I love what he's doing because it's a journey I've walked. Yeah. I've walked to come from nothing, to build myself to be a brand and do all these different things. And I see the journey that Casper is walking. But if there's one thing that I admire about Casper is he only had matric, bro. Mm. And I'm sure you and I both know how difficult it is from Pumekasi. Mm. Mm. And I know that you also fall within those types of people as well who have not had the privilege of um, attaining good education yeah. and going to varsity, attaining degrees. Maybe we can start from around there because I'm sure there's a lot of people out there who might think, ah, because I'm I mean, these things are not for me. Maybe because I'm not missing, I'm like grand. Uh, you know what I mean? Yeah. There's yeah. a lot of people out there, but as these stories keep coming up, those people inspire millions of other people out there. And maybe some people don't even know about Bulalani's story as well, about your history and way, how you've come up to become this person that you are. So let's backtrack it a little bit and go back to your younger years at Tembisa. Yeah, so, yo, Tembisa, um, I'm raised by a single mother. Um, I'm one of two, Nehortman, I've got an older brother. So I'm the last born. Uh, by the time my time came for nice things in education, there was no money. <laughs> <laughs> my, mother, point, sure. my mother had been retrenched um, where she was working. No problem, I guess. Um, so, Mkansa. Oh, Mkansa. Okay. Mkansa. Um, Kasla, and then I think we then later moved to Hospital View. And the reason why I would say because it was Hospital View is like some sort of a suburb. That's a team So, in Shalom, you know, so Puma Hospital View is over 30. Like, <laughs> <laughs> now nah, that's true so and i think for me um i sort of went through my high school years you know um i went to a college about the elite college my grade eight grade nine one was to a bonus school but in yakana called val christian high so they wanted to set me on the straight and narrow oh was it this age yeah. okay and then i came back from the val uh, unfortunately, I couldn't then continue with my grade 10. They, my mother then decided to take me to an FET college, the Kuruleni West uh, campus, the one in Kempton Park. Yeah. Did my introductory course, did my first N or second level, then the money re ran out, you know. Then I spent about two years um, in Lini doing nothing, you know, but really just thinking, planning, um, just trying to think what could I do. And then there was a Hortman who then came at the time to my church, uh, Hector, Hector Mdao. Um, and then Mr. Yellow, Chapu Jang Rutmaneruna, you also you know, raised me, my brother. <laughs> Thank you for raising a lot of us. Yeah. I think we're the few here who will speak on uh, on behalf of millions of others' lives that you've changed. I think he's one of the earliest yeah. motivational speakers yeah. in this country. Yeah. So early, thank you for all early, the contribution, early. my brother. Anyway, before yeah. disturbing you, so I mean, he came he, to your school. Yeah, no, no, he came to he came to a youth service, a church. And I mean, I remember him speaking about stuff I had never heard at the time. Yeah, well, you know, stuff in and around. Go out there and experience the things that you dream about. You know, the fact that the world is your oyster, you can start your own business. Then I'm a kid, I said, like, that's a business. I'm unemployed, I'm unemployable. You're talking about business, my highest, I guess, academic high school level is grade nine. Then I tried the end levels, then I bummed out. So what are you talking about? And then I think from there, the sort of seed then was sown to say, Yazin, let me hustle. Now I've got no financial backing, no, at the time, no real direct mentors apart from books. You know, I was getting from my friend's dad that I would read. And I then decided to start. Then my back opposite neighbors, the Namanis, gave me their, but in my wardrobe doors to use as tabletops, the local supermarkets. I'll mention them, score, because they're no longer in business. Yeah, phase three, the main shops, yeah. Sure. 
They and and bonga na metric that time. No, no, zero, zero, zero. Una ngaki that time. I know, no, shoof, sixteen. I think okay. sixteen at the time. Um, Yatabalaza, you know, Junior gives me a pen and some books to ledger. Zintle buys me <laughs> I'm a table cloth. Um, Felicia gives me some cash to register the business. My brother buys ink. Marcus gives me a Lexmark printer. You know, Dumsani helps in watching the shop. You know, uh, yo, man. <laughs> a lot of guys just come in and do different things. Nkosana does the IT at his work. Was like, here's some cables. And Kai does be, you know, with some tech stuff to figure out yeah. and i think that was then the journey you know so i think from the you know i think for me i look at my journey as you know i don't just consider myself self-made i definitely consider myself community built and to today there are people who are contributing i mean you've contributed immensely to my journey so it then started that way you know is this internet cafe or this shop that we would run um, but i mean coincidentally before there i started my first deal actual business deal was a deal to supply metric jackets to a high school called Rosefield High. Because at the time, he, my Amachitin Kule and my friends from Hospital View at Mbisa were in high school. And I mean, I'm then brainstorming this idea, you know, I know someone who knows someone who's in the printing space, maybe we could do a metric jackets. They take this message to the deputy principal, they push me, I go there, I present, I'm wearing my pink shirt, you know, I'm wearing my... And, uh, but in you know, my former black trousers with those, sh- but in the one of the sharp nose, the the the, the oh, boat local like kick and powers. <laughs> I've got a Motorola V3 cover, no foam. I've got a laptop bag, no laptop. Oh, yeah, but sure, no. <laughs> V3, yeah, V3, V3 six. <laughs> If only see the iPad still, the man could not move past the lap of your seat, Dabo. So Nyabangena are doing presentations on a business I don't run. But I remember, just to fast forward, they, after a couple of meetings, then I'm sitting there with the deputy in the office. Then she asked me, who should we make this check out to? That time, all I have is... All oh, those regi- days, checks were yeah, still... Yeah. Checks were still a thing. They, I don't have a... I've got a, all I have is a registered business. I've got no bank account. I've got nothing. <laughs> yeah. I then think on my feet and I say to her, you know what? You, you, if you write it to the business... Um, our auditors are busy auditing <laughs> uh, so it's going to take two, three months for us to start with the work so write it out in my name so how I could tell her that was because my brother used to write me 50 rand checks you know and then I'd go to the local bank the, the standard bank I think at the time with my ID then I'd cash now, so here they are writing me 50% of 15,780 and I'm going to the bank and I walk from Roseville to Kempton Park West Street I give it to this consultant and he says Justice do you know how much money this is yeah. you can't cash this money here yeah. you need to open an account so that was the first time I opened my bank account and and then from there, you know, we supplied the order. It was the first 800 I ever made. Gave my mother 500. She thought I was doing drugs or something. Yeah, illegal. Yeah, kanga, man. You know, yeah, kanga. And then I think after that, I thought, you know, what's the day-to-day business I could start? Then the internet cafe started. Then the then story then started to piece in. And then my entrepreneurial journey started. I mean, for the first seven years, I was making anything between 180 to about 380, but always on a 2,000, 3,000 run deficit. Um, purely because we could not afford, we did not have internet connectivity, so we're using those old school dongles. I think the company was called Hoha Connect. Yeah, yeah, so, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Shout out to Eshikonja, I forgot the guys that started it, I forgot the name, but big up to you guys. You guys were one of the, uh, but in pioneers yeah, in the definitely. internet space in the country. No, nah, definitely. So, I mean, because now you have to charge a market related cost for internet, but here's a hoha charging me 28 rent, but I'm charging seven. Because you must stay within the market. But I think over the years then, you know, the business then, after seven years, literally after seven years, it took a turn. I remember that year, it was seven years in June um, the 30th. It took a different turn. So from there to where we are now, we've just been growing and developing and diversifying um, the business offering. So when I meet you, I meet you doing the Sibusisolop Education uh, Foundation um, school talks. Yeah. I've got a foundation, SLEF, abbreviated. Go to high schools, motivational talks, organize bursaries every year. Uh, it's since been a business that has really taught me how to give and how to be selfless with my success or with my blessings. I always say Sibusiso means blessing. I'm yeah. blessed to become a blessing. I bless other children. So through this vehicle, we go to schools. 
I've literally been to 900 and something schools, almost a thousand. I'm still not in a thousand schools. But before I die, I'll definitely would have physically visited over a thousand schools in my life. I don't know a lot of people out there who've visited yeah. at least 20 high schools. I've visited at least 900 and something schools. I'm not even talking varsities. I've visited almost every varsity in, in South Africa. And I've really been blessed enough as well to, to have spoken in other platforms all over the world. But not to toot my own horn, the reason why I'm bringing this up is because all of a sudden, in these talks that I'm doing, I'm always, there's always people, new people who are just joining our scheme. Some of them, they hear about it on radio because I'm on radio at the time because they think it's all glitz and glam. It's like, it was Nabusbu and this is me at the height of my entertainment career. So my popularity is at its peak in South Africa. And people just think, just coming, J.O. Savannah was, and they actually didn't understand the amount of work that is in serving, serving our community, serving students, serving young people. And sometimes when I visit schools, I know that I'll see them maybe on one or two or three schools mm. at mm. most, the ones that want to take along. But I know I won't see them anymore because mm. then they'll get to see the real hard work, <laughs> what it takes yeah, to do the type true. of work we were doing. Mm, very true. But then here's a man who just literally was not going anywhere. This man was just <laughs> always there. And that's how I met you. Yeah. I literally met you through the Slav school talks. Maybe let's talk a bit about that. And just um, how our relationship has grown from then, but I think I'd like I'd like for you to focus on you. Sure. Yeah. So I think, and also the importance of giving, because yeah. you literally joined us and you were just serving from yeah. day one yeah. till today. With <laughs> what you're doing with Tran Township Entrepreneurs yeah. Alliance, I'm so proud of you. Yeah, you're thank still you so serving, much. Yeah. and I've always said it, good guys. When we give, we'll all be blessed. Mm -hmm. And I look at a lot of people that we used to go to schools with Fandakh. A lot of them are blessed. Yeah. And it's things I used to say then, because I used to feel like, yo, if I had a, a lot of money, I would pay these guys. But it was a foundation, it was a non-profit. We were not making money. We were yeah. just serving our yeah. community. Yeah. And he's still here. <laughs> 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 but he's doing his own thing. Yeah, and that's that's what true. makes me proud. Sure. Um, so I think, so for me to... I think to join SLEF. Um, I, I don't know where you were. It, it didn't be easy. So here am I stopping this guy at the stop street. He talks to me. I'm like, hey, I want to join this SLEF thing and come help out. He says to me, you know, find a guy called so Vuyani. Now I'm looking for this Vuyani yeah. guy. Facebook, whatever. Shout out to Mr. Kafile, whoever you are, Vuvu. <laughs> I find Vuyani. Vuyani is like, come. He welcomes me. I come there. You know, and w there I am at this left. And I think, Vela, you're right. You know, from the first day, all we are doing is putting up, pull up banners, packing stuff, you know. And I think of, of the couple of months of consistency, then I'm given an opportunity to share my story. But we are there traveling, you know. I think we did like four schools a week. Yeah. For, yeah. for a solid couple of years, you yeah. know. And even and then on top of that, it was varsities. After the high schools, it's yeah. varsities. <laughs> You know, thousands and thousands and thousands of these kids. But I think through that journey, right, it taught me, you know, I think through everything. In actual fact, Get Things Done comes from a talk you did. There was a talk you did. There was a school. I've got the picture. I don't remember the name. You, you, you spoke and you spoke and you spoke. And at the end of the talk, you said, you guys must get things done. Then I was like, no, but I like this Get Things Done. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so ever since then, I've worn this cap for a solid good year, six years, every single day. Then that has been my message to get things done because we're very practical. Actions change things. You know, you're very practical in everything you taught. So as we were engaging, but I think the biggest lessons that I learned through SLEF came through more than listening to you speak, how you were engaging and maneuvering how you were able to constantly give and constantly give. I mean, for me, the first interview I did, you set it up. The first TV interview I did, you set it up. The first, I didn't have enough social media then. You set up my first and only Instagram account. Siraz, yeah, your time like, flies. Yeah. You, you know what you were doing? You were tagging me before I had an Instagram account. Oh, yeah. And yeah, then you yeah, were like, yeah. no, 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 let's sit down. And then you would, and then I remember, I think most of it was when all was said and done were the hour, two hour calls in the evenings, 1 a.m., 2 a.m. You know, fix this. You do this wrong. Change this. Upgrade this. And that was the direct mentorship that one required. And I think from a sort of business growth perspective, because out of that, then the relationship grew. 
you know then it became a very personal relationship you know meeting your family it became a very close it became a brotherhood right it's not a you're not my friend you're my man i view you as blood because of you know it's years i mean it's over eight years or whatever of just brotherhood and you've helped so many and i think the relationship just grew from the from slave now here we are again serving getting into leadership 2020 fasting our way in <laughs> yeah, yeah. then we got in did a lot of varsity work corporate and then a lot of corporate gigs came out of that and out of that then t was birthed because where t was birthed was through a conversation with you we had visited one of the slave members it was their birthday then uh, the idea came i shared Ooh, the idea man. was slow Oh, it was a close house. It was one yeah. It was in the evening at close house. Then I'm telling you about this idea. Then you're like, no, but this thing must be done. We'll do it. We'll support you. And then, bah. Yo, then yo. you were the first speaker at T in 2015 in July yeah. with a lawn raise. Is it, was so, it 2015 already? 2015 in July. You gotta be, t- you gotta be kidding me. So, so T is now five years old. No, six. Six Show, <laughs> bro. In uh, in July this year, seven, seven years old. And that's that's exactly where I wanted to take the conversation to say, the the seed of giving at the time, as much as it, it was planted, but you're already doing it. It's not something that you were wishing or wanting to do. Yeah. You were already doing it then. Now you've grown, but yeah. you're still doing it. But you're doing it at a bigger scale. Because yeah. if you were somebody else, you would have been very. Um, I never want to call it selfish. It's not like you're selfish when you're doing well and you look out for yourself and your family. Yeah. That, that's okay. But he didn't do that. He just decided to want to um, spread them. But why Why township? Why entrepreneurs? And why open this idea up to hundreds, thousands, if not flipping hundreds of thousands mm. of young entrepreneurs? Look sheen. No, because I think for me, that, that sort of work came through the inspiration of that came through the work that we did through SLEF and the inspiration was through the entrepreneurial show you used to do on Metro and sharing so many nuggets and so many of these entrepreneurs wanting this info. Then I think from that through also Leadership 2020 to say, wow, you know, imagine having all this info but a gas, you know, in the township. So then the focus then came from the fact that I'm a township kid. Here are all these township young ladies and these gens you know, let me create a platform. And, and I think the idea then was simple. Just so that we, they meet once a month at Timbis. But through, you know, hunger, through the insatiable hunger from the entrepreneurs, it grew. You know, it was wanted in other townships. So for the first three and a half years, you know, it, I mean, I was paying for tea during COVID, all the teas, I paid for them. But after the three and a half years, some sponsors then came in to assist there and there, which we were grateful for. Um, but I think the, the motto has been the same to say, and I think this is what you'd say, with or without them, we move as different partners come in and go. And I remember different partners coming in to do one, two, three, and then they disappear. And then you were like, with or without them, we move and we maintain the standard, right? And, you know, when we get to a school and there's 500 kids, we move. There's 10,000, we move. Whatever the case was, the stage, we move. There's no mic, we move. So with that culture and with that thinking at the back of my head, it then lodges, get things done. You get things done. And that's what, so it wasn't just words. It was things physically moving and things physically, you know, happening and you getting things done. And now this thing becomes impactful because you're seeing in right, life stands, like right in front of you happening. So... You can't not but be impacted and inspired and have that be a daily message and a motto. That's incredible, bro. If I can say, what have you learned through running TAE or through running Township <laughs> Entrepreneurs Alliance over the past six years? Oh, I mean, I think the, one of the biggest things is, you know, we are the market. You know, it's, and, 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 I, and you know, the, the, the crazy thing is, I remember when you do these school tours and now this tea is coming inspired by your work it's coming inspired by slave and the message there you know before there was batu before there was any of these brands as babazwayo the message was clear buy local but there were no products so the message if you remember came before the product and you seem like a crazy guy here we are through tea trying to preach the same message but there are no products but you see that seed now today it sort of makes sense for these everyone to have 
um, try and have an alcoholic brand or everyone to try and have their own lingerie brand. And I think that was the message and the story being preached then. But I'm seeing it now in translation to say, as in we are the market. And to see more people of all races embracing black brands that are being created locally, consuming them with dignity, that for me is the win. I think that the next level that we, we sort of want to unlock that are looking at unlocking through tea is to then translate this market further and further through more retail consumable products you know to say well if these small businesses are in the space let us provide them speed points let us provide them accounting softwares let it not just be a network of 55,000 entrepreneurs but all we have shared with them is motivation learning market access but let us then have retail products that we are able to then provide that go beyond just conversation so we now can map out these 55 or let's say even 5,000 entrepreneurs, 5,000 entrepreneurs across the country. But the biggest thing, and, and I think for me, the third biggest thing is to say the misconceptions around township is cheap, township is not good quality, township is mediocre, it's all false. Because everywhere you go in the country, yeah, the products might not look, some of them, the products might not look right, but what they've, what they've, not, what they've done is they've created they just keep creating it, might not the most, the most beautiful or the most perfect, but they keep creating products. I think that the next biggest thing that we need to open up is re retail and shelving spaces. But I think beyond that, more consumers being cautious of where they spend their 10 rand, their 20 rand, their 40 rand and their, their 50 bucks. If there's anyone in South Africa right now that is more in touch with what is going on with an ordinary, what other people would call an SMME or a young or a South African local township entrepreneur, there's nobody I know out there who has got the interaction with those types of people and the knowledge. Um, there's no person I know apart from you. Now, if we were to take you and put you in a leadership position uh, at, um, at the... Um, um, l let me not even say at the um, Department of Economic Development, but let me put you in Mamlindi with Susulu's office. Is she still head of that office, that ministry? No, no, no. It's it's now uh, Sistella. She's no longer, right? Yeah. So if I were to put you in her shoes, what would you do for the township entrepreneur? Whew. <laughs> <laughs> and by the way, shout out to Mama, and I'm not Amazing talking bad work, about yeah. anyone, but I'm just saying, if I were to put you in, the, in those shoes, <clears throat> somebody who's interacted with these entrepreneurs and somebody who's been side by side growing yeah. their own business from scratch yeah. and even these 50,000 plus entrepreneurs that you have in your database it's people that majority of them you know one-on-one -on -one, yeah. ganj yeah. you know their plights you know their problems you deal with them every month you know you know their numbers mm. you got their emails everything so you literally are a living physical embodiment of an of a south african township entrepreneur or an SMME as they would call it. You are a champion of that and that's what makes me proud. Mm. What would you do? Sure. I think for me, some of the things that I do, right, in supporting the team in furthering the work is to provide them with real life insights because we've got that. Data in and around where are they, what are their actual issues and then mapping that against the programs that are out there in the market. The second thing that we would do is to act as an ecosystem aggregator that will then take the programs that they are running, their KPIs and their goals, and then match them up with other industry programs and corporate practitioners that are willing to participate in other funding or supporting those programs and creating some sort of a market linkage because I think one of the biggest gaps that you find is there are various departments that do various things some of them are repeat work as opposed to streamlining everything in such a way that it speaks to the very same things right and I think more than that then opening up Ma sorry, market access opportunities because every life sales is the lifeline of every business. Every business wants sales. And I think being able to then dumb down, the, not necessarily dumb down, don't take it in a bad way, but dumb down the language that's in some of these documents, how you're interacting because most of the conversation has been in and around let township businesses that are not registered or small businesses that are not registered formalize. But the conversation around formalizing doesn't take understanding at the epicenter of, you know, solving for these 
entrepreneurs. So we understanding doesn't lead. But all we are saying is go to CIPC register, then go to SARS and register, then go to Quaida and register, then do your industry body registration. But it doesn't guarantee that I'm going to get business. So being able to then operate beyond the levels of just simply saying formalizing and operating from a point of saying how do we age you but most importantly tell us where we are and let us hear you beyond the words that you speak and help you to grow your business and then i think some of the biggest things is and i think i learned this from a lot of the tea entrepreneurs is to say we've always looked at opportunities as government opportunities or big business opportunities but some of these entrepreneurs and through the app that we are developing you know and through doing i'm a focus in and amongst each other but the challenge has always been how do i find my peer who's accredited and credible who can then come in that i can source to do the work so i think some of the biggest in so i think as a synopsis gather the entrepreneurs gather the information on who they are and manage that every six months real time integrate integrate the ecosystem so that services business support business compliance is integrated across the board and the, the fourth point is operate from a point of understanding compliance cannot be the start and end all you you can't utilize um, an entrepreneur who doesn't a letter have a letter of good standing as the ultimate criteria to disqualify them from doing work you can utilize it as a criteria to saying we'll provisionally give you the work but the moment you get your first payment you need to then sort out your letter of good standing and pay what is to create what is to create then you would have empowered this business with the opportunity this individual with the opportunity to go out there and grow the business and create more employment now i've been in a position where you're doing a lot of good work but sometimes it takes too much of your time where you don't even know because you know good work has to be done it's the right thing to yeah. do and it's god's work but then you also need to make money right yeah. uh you know being stuck between a rock and a hard place where i want to continue doing this good yeah. i want to continue doing this work but then i can't have time or i don't know how to make money up while i'm doing this mm -hmm. or how do i find a way of incorporating the two yeah. and and i'm sure you obviously you've been through that journey with your with your own business yeah. on the side and also running t mm. as much as t is not a for, for is not a non-profit organization i know but it's a business but i can tell and i know because of having done that work that that work is literally forgiving because yeah. the amount of money that you make there is neither here nor there that money actually even covers the costs yeah. and not even covers all the costs yeah. it covers some yeah, costs some of costs, the work yeah. that you do to give back but how do you bridge the two how do you and, and i'm sure a lot of people out there who are in the same boat are watching to say i always love giving or i've been giving since high school or since primary i want to continue giving but how do i bridge the two to continue giving and giving uh, and making a difference in my community but still become an active trading entrepreneur who's making money, whose business is thriving, etc. How have you been able to balance the two? So, obviously, I think when I started, you know, T started as a passion. I'm running this printing company. Um, but, you know, it was a bit of a, it was a bit, of, it worked. But I think over time, as this passion grew and became bigger and bigger, I, you know, I had to find ways of commercializing the work that we do through T. You know, whether it's through, whether it's through, you know, we now offer enterprise supply development programs and we then build pro corporates to pay for those, you know, under T, to keep the T work going, you know, because the T work, like you say, you know, it's, 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 it's sometimes, most of the time it's thankless because you go out, you've seen 9,000 entrepreneurs in a year, you know, the money's gone, but you've got this fulfillment in your heart. But I think now, Kona, the biggest driver has always been to say, what are we solving for? What are we building towards? And the thinking that says build long term. And if the thinking is building long term, it, it helps you to also then nip certain desires in the butt and delay the gratification. Because you're building so that you can get, you know, to 100,000 township entrepreneurs. You know, there's about 1.8 million um, informal businesses. There's about over 600,000 um, small registered small businesses with the CIPC. So our thinking is imagine, you know, being able to house all of those onto our platform then the levels of commercialization become way bigger, way broader. So even if you have a corporate partner who's come in and said, we'll sponsor you with X amount, even if you're looking at making 10% or 20% of that as profit, you then end up thinking, let me put every single thing back into bettering this product so that there's, so that, you know, you're always ahead, you're always offering a better solution. And I think for me, that's how I've been able to bridge it. And 
and I think even with the prisons that I've ran, it's, it's evolved, you know, it's evolved. Most of it is integrated, the work that he does completely, you know, we've brought someone in to handle the print, you know, who's been in the print space for over 10 years, who's running it completely. Uh, we've ten taken over equity, so our, my primary focus entirely is T you know, and offering whatever mentorship and guidance I can to continue maintaining the corporate relationships. But I think it's the passion that overtook and then it was also then being able to commercialize which how then do we then make money to then build in sustainability. And at this point, it's not at the point where you are making all of it because you're still competing with a lot of narratives. You know, some, some, of, the, some of the places where we are in, we are, you are the only young black guy and, you know, sometimes you don't even have a matric. Yeah, that guy, young black, don't have a matric, is sitting with professors and doctors. But, you know, we are in those spaces and the biggest thing is to grow. Sorry, I know some people out there behind that camera, they are shocked. Yes, he doesn't have matric. <laughs> <laughs> All these great things we've spoken about, he doesn't have matric. So if he's capable of this, what are you, what are you capable of? Sorry, sorry, no, I disturbed no, 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 you. Sure. So I think for me it's that, you know, and... I mean, we look forward to doing more and advancing. So, which is why sometimes when we tried knocking on a lot of doors, and I remember, you know, I was so upset years ago. I invited a guy from the township, prominent guy then, and I think this advice will also help you in this tough journey, which is entrepreneurship. And I remember coming to you, as in, I invited so and so. Because you had asked me, what's wrong? I'm like, I invited so-and-so. He said he's going to come. We put him on the flyer. He promised on the day. You know, he's not answering calls. But when you call him on different numbers, he's answered. You know, and that day I was looking for comfort and sympathy from you. And your response was simple. But no, it's simple. The reason why it didn't come is because you're not important enough to them. You know, it simply says that you need to go make it, you know, make it so irresistible. You need to go back, work harder. You know, you can't play the sympathy game. And when they come in future... And they say, hey, let's work. You can't turn them away. So there's no room for bad blood. There's no room for emotions. You are taking it too personal. So I sat there. I remember walking away there feeling like, hey, Mara, this guy, what the hell is he telling me? I want comfort. I want him to back me. Which that guy is crazy. But all he's saying is that, no, work harder. Because if you work harder and you make an offering compelling enough, it will be irresistible for them not to want to come. In actual fact, they will be troving in lines. They will be standing and making a queue, wanting to come and share their knowledge because you would have built an irresistible product. So then I use that as a model till today in everything. To say, no, no, it's simple. You know, it's not about you. You haven't built it strong enough. You haven't built it big enough, you know. It's like, you know, one thing that you'd say is that, no, no, you're not yet ready. You were able to identify that in us to say, hey, you're not yet ready for this. You're not yet ready for that. Build this thing more. And being having someone who is very true and honest then helps you to also be honest with yourself to say, yes, I want that spotlight. Yes, I want those opportunities, but I'm not ready. So if I'm not ready, let me go work. Was at the right time, mustn't grin, then I'll come and I'll get them. Wow, he's dropping jams, guys. It's like expecting Ushimza to pull the type of crowds or relationships he's pulling now through UR or through Kunye back when he was still starting the one man show at Tembisa. It's like, Uba knows was a good one man show at Tembisa, Uba and Ushimza, Ushimi, Ushimi, Wakokae. But over the years, Shimi built that one-man show. And then at Tembisa, we started seeing celebrities that yeah. we would see Wupi Wupi coming to at Tembisa. And then at Tembisa, we started seeing big stars who've got big songs in that year headlining a one-man show at Tembisa. We're like, wow, Shimi is literally... And then everybody wanted to come to the one-man show in Tembisa. I got Shimi, Shimza, by the way. But look at where he is right now. He's even going international. Yeah. Why? He's had the years to build. It, it's not overnight, guys. So what he's dropping now is gems that you got to make yourself hot. You can't make demands if you're not in demand. Mm -hmm. Be in demand first, then you can make demands. Other than that, you must get the hell out of here. People are busy. Mm -hmm. So build your thing to be so cool, so attractive, so hot that everybody wants it. Then you can make your demands. <laughs> And I know and the truth, the truth. The but truth because hurts. I love this guy, and it's not only him and, and a couple of other guys that we have, I always I would be honest. And then it would hurt sometimes. It's just like me on my even till today, my hot man would say certain things where it would hurt. I'm like, 
but this guy's a billionaire. Why doesn't he just give me five million? <laughs> but as the years go by, then I start understanding. Good. Oh, that was the lesson. That was the yeah. lesson. That's how this um, this hustle thing works, guys. That's why mentors are important, yeah. right? Yeah. But why choose to become a mentor for so many people, bro? No, because you know, in most cases, townships, and I think across the country, you know, are forgotten. There are townships that have got people focusing on them. But you know, as you travel around the country, you see so much talent. And I think for us, all we're saying is we will come into your township to ignite what is possible and leave you with that reality which we did it and we are not from here. So now it's up to you guys to come together. Because if we could bring 600 people, for instance, and go into Sishikho and have 600 people in the room and we've never been to Sishikho, it was our first time, how much more you guys in Salada? If you guys came together and collaborated mm. amongst yourself without us, we, we, we are just aggregators. But if you guys came together, you know, Kaeli, Chakukule, Tembisa, Soshanguve, and you came together, you know, with no hate, with no jealousy, you'd achieve crazy and insane things. And I think that's why I choose to do the work that we do. And I believe, you know, I'm going to get my, I'm getting an actual, not that I'm going to get, I get my reward at the end of every tea session when the job is done. The people have gotten whatever information that is my role you know and i feel like god's done there's nothing else i don't sleep and i feel like yeah short that is it i'm happy so i don't feel future feel like yo i did so much work in 2019 i'm still old no did work in 2021 didn't get paid for anything actually i spent most of my money on t 2021 because it was covered no partners no funding no nothing but i still felt good and I still feel good in this moment because I feel like we added a brick to this wall that we are building, to this house that we are building. And at the right time, whether I'm 40 or 50, it's all going to make sense. He's dropping more jams because he's saying sometimes it's not always about the bag. And I know that, guys, you have to make the money. And that is true. It's always about the bottom line, but not always, guys. There's a lot of things that you're going to do that are not necessarily about the bag, but they're about building value, building yourself doing certain things pro bono, or sometimes doing some trade exchange deals, and sometimes not even seeing the money. As a matter of fact, there's going to be times where you're spending the money. You're actually even losing money at some point. And this thing is irritating, but it's fulfilling because it's God's work. But at some point, it's going to pay off. How? I don't know. What it's going to be or when? I don't know. But all I know is the right thing to do, which is serving the Lord and doing God's work, in what you do as you are blessed. At some point, you, you're you forever going to be blessed. People are, sometimes yeah. ask me, like, dude, you've been in this industry for, for so many years or whatever. Till today, you're still getting bookings, you're still giving talk, you're still DJing, you're still doing... I'm like, yo, if you ask good, you know? Yeah. But till today, I'm still doing my thing. I always believe when Nabulelan is because of the work that one does to empower other people. Mm. And I see you as one of those billionaires in this country who's walk the journey from scratch with no metric and having have had this for lack of a better language monkey on your back mm. with everybody telling you yeah marona metric yeah marona metric yeah marona metric maneuvering a world with people with degrees with masters coming from rich families with twanging english and whatever but you just keep maneuvering this thing you just keep doing your thing yeah. you just keep going and Sometimes you just don't understand why or how. But I want to remind you of, and, and this you guys will find a lot of value, a story you told us, I think after one of the slave sessions. Uh, we were chilling in the office and you said, you know, and I think what you were trying to then make us understand is the importance of relationship, but most importantly, how to network. So I don't know if you'd remember. So you say to me, there's this hot man, he's, got a, he's done very well for himself as a billionaire. You mention him. Then you say, no, he then says to you, listen, I'm doing something in my province. I'd like you to come in and assist. I don't know if it was a birthday or a birthday party or oh, a function or something. Remember, yeah? Then you then say, this hot man says, no, I don't know these things, but you know these things. Arrange this thing and plan it and put it together and whatever. You know, then here you are putting this thing together to support or to assist. Then I think you then say, at the day when this whole event is happening and it's happening well, um, he then says, hey, you must send an invoice. Then you say to him, no, it's, it's fine. It's on me. You know, it was good cash. You could have been paid. But you say, which I keep the man. You know, and then from that, from you saying that, it brought your way into that relationship and it's become a long-term relationship. 
And then you then share the story to say, you know, even today, if I want to tap into that relationship, I can. Because I've earned my right. But out of that, it then opened up other business opportunities. So you see then for us, when we sit there and we're listening to that story, it's like, that's how you get into relationships. You don't go in with your hand out. Yeah, you could have, because it was an actual business transaction. You could have made X amount of money, but you decided, no, what do you give? And I think this is what you said. What do you give someone who's got all the money in the world? If you give him 10 rand, he's got it. If you give him a million, he's got it. But if you take away his opportunity to pay, which has worked hard for all his life, now you've gained his attention. And I remember, I held on to that story all my life. Till today, I share it at tea. I share it everywhere I go because it made so much sense. And you lived it. And then you then came and shared it with us. So we then, for me, I don't feel like I then need to then go in and learn things the hard way because all the... You know, some all the nuggets were there, especially this one around how to build networks and how to earn yourself in spaces. Mm, I get you, and I hope you guys are are learning out there. But now there's a future; the world is evolving, and um, I know you're gonna be one of the late adopters, but I don't want you to be. Yeah. And I'm always preaching and and, and shouting the next wave, gents. This is what we're doing now. Yeah. You know, guys, this is what we're doing now. This is what I'm doing yeah. now, which is cryptocurrency, right? Um, let's not talk about cryptocurrency now, but let's talk about the digital yeah. evolution. Yeah. Now, you're responsible for about 100,000 plus entrepreneurs in South Africa directly. Mm -hmm. Indirectly, you probably are responsible for a million plus entrepreneurs. Yeah. Maybe same here as yeah. well, right? But what are some of the things that you think are the future of entrepreneurship for young South Africans or for SMMEs? You know, COVID-19, I think, brought to light a lot of things. And I think... You know, it's a conversation. And, and you know what I'm going to do? Yeah. Usually people will say, cut. Can I please go to the loo? I'm going to go to the loo. But because I know him, I'm comfortable. I know he's going to speak some jewels and some gems. He's going to drop them long enough until I'm back here. Sorry, <laughs> you were saying? Yeah, so I think for me, you know, what? Now, COVID-19, what it's done is that it's, it's, you know, it's edified or rather it's shown us, you know, nakedly the importance of the digital economy. And I think what you, what you find across the board and what we've been able to find through T is that there's still quite a lot of businesses that are not digitized. And by that is you simply go to your web browser and you can't find them. And what that then says to us is that it's important to be able to take these businesses and onboard them onto a digital platform so that they're easily accessible. But then you then find another challenge to then say, you know, uh, you know, most of the time when you have a problem in your house and you've got a leak or you need someone to come in and do maintenance to provide a certain service, there's always a challenge. And that challenge is, who do I find? And you never know who to call and where to find these people or to find the credible person. So I think then it became incumbent on us to say, well, if we want to build, um, if we want to build a community of um, entrepreneurs who have started their own things but they're easily accessible to the market let's take them and put them on the platform where you'd be able to find them so we then started building a platform called t it's a, it's a business hub that would then take these township businesses that would ordinarily be excluded that would not ordinarily not be able to participate in the digital economy and put them on this platform but most importantly open them up to an opportunity where they can have their products bought through you know a, through a payment gateway and have their products couriered to anyone across the world because that's one some of the things that we are finding and i think through i mean i think through the adoption of you know new technologies and uh, blockchain and you know nfts have come up in the market you know cryptocurrencies coming up in the market the meta wave and i think it's then come to us to then say because we are operating in a market where there's still a lot of traditional um, methodologies to doing business where people still rely on cash on hand it then becomes important enough to, to say you know we need to then start introducing the digital economy and i think that's what we have done through T so that we build long term and we are not we are not late adopters or late bloomers in this new economy and are able to also have these entrepreneurs start to learn that you no longer need brick and mortar to operate your business you no longer need 
sorry, you no longer need brick and mortar to operate your business, but you can literally, through drop shipping, you can literally function and operate, you know, through white labeling, you can operate and run your business, you know, and I think through being able to understand how the digital economy, sorry, digital economy works, you can find your place in the digital economy. And I think we've seen I mean, a lot of amazing product, products. And I think what we're also introducing is to say, you know, why start your own brand? You can identify local brands in your community that are loved and engage with those founders and resell those products because you know we've often and then i think some of the inhabitants especially in the digital economy is to say you know especially in starting to become an entrepreneur is that you know i can't start my business because you know i'm waiting for money and for funding for this and for that but being able to say well i've got facebook i've got twitter i've got instagram and this instagram shop and this facebook marketplace and you know there's olx and there are all these other platforms could I not engage other entrepreneurs that are in the same space that have got products, get them to drop their pricing, give them a brokerage price and start to list these products while I'm harassing, while I'm a fuel attendant, while I'm a cleaner, while I'm working my job at place X, Y and Z. Because what that then does is that through the digital economy and through you by, and by no means through you not even participating in any manufacturing, in any logistics, you were able to move a product from zero to where it needs to be but just free, by just purely facilitating a digital transaction and I think that's where we are in the economy and that's where we want to drive a lot of township business and a lot of township entrepreneurs and I think there's a lot I mean through NFTs which I'm learning about um, I'm excited about that because I'm learning about NFTs you know easy equities or something I'm participating in you know buying shares and stocks yeah, and, and, and dropshipping years ago this guy dropshipping but you know what? Like said, <laughs> and I and that's what I love about you. Like we have a you have a you know, and and you never selfish in the info. Yeah. And and for me, I just want I don't want to cut up the interview because there's so many things that you and I uh, have to speak about. But I do know that you, you know we don't have much time. But uh, I I would love maybe to do three more questions, and that might take us however long. It's fine. Yeah. Because this has been long overdue. Like I've been wanting to have Bulelani for quite some time. Actually, I wanted to have him. I think, actually, you stood me up at some point. Ah. I don't know, but it's fine. It's fine. Let's not bring it up because we, we're all busy. I mean, these things happen. I forgot when it was, just before COVID or during COVID. I don't remember. But I think what excites me is the, the loudness of the entrepreneurship voices. I think the conversation around entrepreneurship now is louder than it's yeah. ever been. Yeah. And I think that's a good thing, right? Yeah. And I think a lot of other people are also starting to see other options outside of just being employed nine to five, yeah. especially since during the lockdowns, yeah. right? Including those who've lost their jobs, mm. those that their businesses suffered, those who started wanting to, you know, explore other things or other ways of making money or other things they can get into. I think lockdown was a good enough time for all of us to find ourselves, yeah. to seek for information and to sort of understand where do I take my life uh, yeah where to yeah. for, for forward you know what i mean it has this logo sometimes but um what what i want to say with all of that being said is i did ask the question before i went to the loo about the future which is for ir it's not even the future we're living in yeah, it already in and i love the yeah. fact that he's already in nfts he's learning as i'm always also very honest and say i'm still new in cryptocurrencies i'm only seven months old and it's not only cryptocurrencies where people can make money there's forex trading there's also other places or platforms or ways in how people can make money on the internet apart from crypto and forex and as i was coming back from the loo i just heard you mentioning drop shipping mm -hmm. as it's one of those affiliate marketing there's so much yeah. and the people are just not aware out yeah. there but say for instance i'm a government um um minister you've got a database of about a hundred thousand entrepreneurs and i do understand that most of them as a government minister the barrier and even other young people are not even business people the barrier is the internet yeah what do you think we should do as the government to help out in that sense in, in getting young people connected to the internet? I think for me it's digital education, right? Because, you know, when... So we did some work with Facebook in digitally, edu digitally educating some entrepreneurs um, online, but I think about 200, we took them through a four-part uh, module. But what we then said to them is, give us your whole module and what you train. We looked at everything that they train and we told them what won't work. 
you know, what they need to change and how they need. Because the curriculum in and itself is great, but it won't work for a small business. And most importantly, it's not going to work for a township business because, you know, these entrepreneurs are thinking, if I'm going to learn anything and I'm going to take two hours away from my business, it needs to be something I'm going to be able to apply immediately after the session. So I think for me, it would be digital education that is bespoke and, you know, that is bespoke, number one. Number two, that is catered and geared to the small business to be able to apply now, learn now, apply now and start integrating it into the immediate business. Then when you started to do that, then you started to see an entrepreneur that never considered WhatsApp business, now thinking about WhatsApp business, thinking about cataloging their products on WhatsApp business, you know, integrating that with their Facebook and their Instagram and then it becomes this beautiful Mary, you know, where through pixels they're able to then add pixels onto their website and then have these people redirected onto their website. And then most importantly, they get the big data that tells them how many people went to your website, how many people went to your social media, how much, you know, transactions did you make. Then you start to see the adoption because for the most part, there's still this big bubble that says, ah, social media is for socializing, for enjoyment. I'll see it later. It's not for business. It's going to waste my time. I'm running a business. But when they started to understand that, no, no, through Google adver to, sorry, to Facebook advertising, if you are able to set up your campaigns in the right way, you are actually able to generate leads while you are sleeping. And why do you, and you know how you, why do you generate better leads from like Facebook advertising or Google ads? Facebook advertising, the consumer told you yeah. what they like, where do they like going, what do they like doing, what do they like wearing. Yeah what they're into, what do they work, or what do they own, what industry they're in, how old they are, what the race they are, which country they're in, which <laughs> continent they're in, you know what I mean? So yeah. it's literally direct to that exact to audience. The T. So it's to the T. So for me, I then say digital, sorry, digi digi digital education, building in infrastructure to allow these entrepreneurs to be able to access this digital world. So I was very impressed with government at some point, some um, municipalities when they started rolling out fiber. Mm. You know, we would love for all to roll out fiber, to be an easily accessible in every township so that they're able to practice and play with this system. And then I think at an elementary level, open up what dropshipping is, how you can start now while you're a taxi driver, you know, while you are working in a, in, as, a, as, a, as, a, as an admin clerk, while you're working as a paralegal, you can now start your own dropshipping business where you white label products, you push them out into the market, or you resell products that are out there without even any sweat, without driving to sell to anyone as we traditionally do with Tupperware or your Avon products or whatsoever the case. And then from the them schooling them into saying, if you then decide to start your own business, you don't necessarily need brick and mortar based depending on the business that you're running. You could literally systemize and digitize the business and have it fully function with a smaller team, but more effective because there's been a narrative in and around digital impacting a 4 digital economy impacting the number of jobs. But in actual fact, it creates more job because when you've got more customers coming in, it creates more ripple jobs with the logistics company hiring more drivers to deliver more products, you know, with the digital companies hiring more guys to go out and splice and trench more fiber, you know, to spread it far and wide. So as, as more, you get more guys in the digital space and consuming and creating more products and, and reselling products within the digital economy, it opens up an opportunity for more mass employment, but also to re-educate more individuals on the new job opportunities because 10 years ago, there was no, there was no social media manager. But today there are social media managers. Today there's a community manager. Today there's someone who manages in big businesses now cryptocurrencies. You know, there was no conversation around that. We thought that they were crazy with the crypto, but we saw it coming up. Now they've got a whole department managing how people can now pay and buy physical products through cryptocurrency. So I think also being able to school new individuals and upgrading the curriculum in and around what the jobs of the future will look like and what they are it becomes very important because then it doesn't exclude people that potentially are looking for work now i know by the way congratulations thanks, on the thanks. little one. Oh, thanks <laughs> juggling yeah. between being a father yeah. and being an entrepreneur yeah yeah you know it's being a kid i think bringing a kid into this world uh, was a shock. I remember telling. Is a good guy. Is a good guy. Is a good guy. Is it? Do you have good money? I'm a pimpers. I'm a vigi. But yeah, 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 yeah. But you know what? It was a super blessing. You know, being a dad has been 
Sorry guys, but that was Yo. just a joke. Lang it lezin to because other people take it personal. Why be sing and say to lezin to Marlas to make one so yakaka lezin. Sometimes you buy it, you think I'm I'm enough for the whole month. Uh uh. Pampers are done in two weeks. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, so when you guys are making yeah, love out yeah. there, you must know. <laughs> and I'm not talking about other things, school fees, clothes, <laughs> medicinal things. No, I'm just talking about my pampers. Yeah, no, just go find know. out how much pampers are. And in Ghana, kakao, in Spanish, my pampers are in Ghana. Pampers and milk. <laughs> pampers and milk. So I mean, I think you know, being a dad, one of the humbling experiences, you know, because now you get this opportunity to teach someone else. You know, you get this opportunity. And I think as someone who was raised by a single mother, um, no dad, didn't know my dad. I still don't know him till today. It was very important for me then. And I'd always told myself, I will never allow any kid, mine or not, who's close to me to go through this experience. So if it's a neighbor, I'm going to play a dad role. If it's a neighbor's kid, I'm going to play a dad role. If it's a, a kid who's close to me, I'm going to play the dad role. But I was given an opportunity to be a father. And... Super humbling. And I think for me, it's also helped to reprioritize, you know, your time. Your oh, and, like uh, great one. Uh, I'm super grateful for that. Yo. And I've got a second born. Yo. A son, <laughs> another son number two. Congratulations, bro. And bruh. I think the factory is... So that's Yeah. Son you lie, two. when? I'm telling you. This, so this is a lockdown baby. Yeah, lockdown Just kid. before lockdown. Yeah, no, lockdown. Yeah. Wow. Lockdown. Congratulations, First year of bro. lockdown in July. Um, but the factory is closed, in yeah. my view, and that's family man business. That's family community man. I love man. my kids, community guy, business, and that's all I do, right? And and I'm grateful for God for that opportunity to bring someone here because it's a big responsibility, you know. And I've never taken it lightly. Bring inviting a human being here is a lot of responsibility because now this is guy who's asking for sweets, who's asking for this, who's asking for yeah. this. But even the things is not asking for like a better education, a better life are things I need to provide. But that then is said to me, be responsible. You know, so I've been yeah, I love, I love, I love my sons. So this is what our townships like Tembisa produce. I'm so proud of you, <laughs> Oh, no, boy, I love you and I'm so proud of you. Onwards and upwards, let's keep growing. No, thank you. Let's raise our kids right. Thank let's you. be there. Let's be present fathers. And let's empower communities. And you're doing all those yeah. things. Yeah. There's just no ways you cannot be blessed in your journey. No, thank we you are so going to go through hurdles. We're going to experience a lot of challenges. It's a challenging journey. Um... But I really do think people like us that are selfless and that are, have got a bigger vision, eventually um, God sees us through, you know? Yeah. yeah. Nah, so keep going, going, bro. Thank you so much, bro. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad this has happened finally. <laughs> Your last words, maybe to the hustlers no, out um, there? Sure, man. You know, they'll, I don't know, there'll never be a good time to start. Start now, you know, look into this digital economy, look into crypto, look into shop, um, please look into drop shipping, look into the metaverse, right? Um, which is now blowing up and uh, the story is building up and start your journey. It doesn't matter what it is. There'll never be a good time. But, you know, the one thing that separates us from everything or everyone else is going out there and doing and simply getting things done. So simply wake up, go out there and get things done. Young people are doing great things with their lives out there. The question is, what are you doing with yours? Thank you very much, guys. This has been The Hustler's Corner. Follow Bulelani Balabala on social media. On some of his platforms, you'll find him as Bulelani Bala. I love you, bro. Love you too. This is The Hustler's Corner.